Good morning, traders. It's Friday, July 29th. Taking a look at the charts, starting off with the SPY ETF, the 30-minute chart. And what I want to look at here is uh, yesterday morning in the video, I talked about the spike that we saw in, in trading here, where we had a spike to the upside. And uh, more or less, the market opened. And we saw a quick uh, pop up to fill about 30% of that spike, which is typically the first kind of target we're looking for. If it hits 30%, we we uh, look to lock in some gains, tighten our stop to break even, and you can chase price up. The market did end up flushing back down, and then by the end of the day, came up and pretty much filled that spike, got that 80% fill for a key target uh, if you were still in that trade. Uh, it's pretty amazing how some of these spikes can play out. There's pretty big price action that we saw uh, this morning. We've got a gap down here. We've got a, a gap in price down at this level here where price started to trade. We had a, a spike up this morning up to fill more or less that uh, gap. And gaps tend to get filled. So we're, right now we're starting to see the market flush itself out, trying to shake out the longs. And we could uh, easily see this. Again, this is a pretty critical support zone through here. You can see how we've hit this many times and bounced off it. Obviously, the more times you hit it, the more you start to eat away at that uh, support level. So eventually, I think we could, if we keep testing this, we might break down and start to break. But at this point, we do have a spike up. We might see the market flush down a little bit lower. But there is a potential here that we'll see it come up and uh, fill a third or 80% of this spike or this gap window here. Uh, potentially today now overall the equities market has been going sideways and if we take a look at the VIX ETF you can see how it's been going down and how difficult it can be to trade the VIX uh, the VIX does provide a lot of opportunity I, haven't, I used to really not talk about it too much but it is pretty interesting because we are getting to a point on the weekly chart here which I wrote, wrote about in a recent article showing that uh, based on the analysis, it looks like we are three or four days away from potential of a fairly significant spike, about a 50% gain type of spike. So uh, either way, uh, I'm just going to start to kind of cover it here because I do think we're getting close to a pretty big move. But if we go back to the SP500 and we go to, uh, let's just go to, we'll just zoom out here. You can see how we've been trading really tight in a sideways range here. Usually the market, when it does this, usually we're going to see it start to squeeze higher and go up and up. And we talked about how uh, over the next uh, week or so, we kind of anticipate it to squeeze higher and move up and shake out the longs, or sorry, the shorts, continue to get more people on the long side, and then uh, that'll put things at a very extreme level. And I think we could see this roll over fairly hard, at which point the VIX would have a huge spike up in price. So overall, we're trading in this very narrow range, about a 10-point range on the SP500 which is a very small range and it's building up energy. And the more something trades sideways in a condensed pattern, the more energy it has. And a lot of times what we've seen is the market kind of grind and unwind a little bit higher. And then you get a huge gap or huge sell off to the downside. Eventually it, t it tends to usually fade up first before it goes down, but either way a break here, we're going to see a pretty big move. I think in the next week or two, that's going to be really significant percentage wise could be a five, 6% move in the the overall equities market the big question is which way is it going to go uh, again my bias is a uh, short term to the upside and then followed by a very sharp uh, decline in price now let's just take a quick look at a couple of the other plays here safe havens let me go back to the daily chart so you can kind of get a grasp of where we're at I'll go to the futures here of bonds and bonds have been pulling back they've been kind of hooking up here finding some support and kind of consolidating. We talked about this pretty much over here about a week, week and a half ago that bonds look like they were pretty much done to the downside that I think they're going to start to firm up as the equities market gets closer to a top. Money's going to slowly start rotating to bonds, which is what we're seeing. Uh, precious metals and uh, both gold, silver, and the miners actually have had a nice pop up just like uh, bonds also kind of holding their ground here. Uh, very similar to what we saw over here, uh, where the mar it'll kind of grind its way. And I think it's, it may end up just holding up fairly tight here in a nice bullish pattern before it has another run up to test these highs and potentially poke up uh, to new highs to test up to this 14 level. So either way, uh, you all know that we are long uh, metals. 
uh, gold and we are bullish long term on the short term basis we're kind of waiting we're letting this consolidate more ideally I'd like to see one more little flush to the downside to come down to this uh, this 1300 level which will be also be the 20 day moving average in due time and of course it's right into these previous tops if we get that three wave correction uh, if you're not sure what a three wave correction is or an ABC you get one two three and it's this third wave this wave that comes down and breaks this low that flushes out a lot of longs cleanse the market and then it, it sets up for the next uh, significant move to the upside so ideally I'd like to see that ABC correction here with a lower low down into a support zone Take a quick look at crude oil continues to uh, to run lower. We're getting closer to this 40 level that we talked about We're right through the middle of this consolidation previous uh, pivot highs over here. So it is unwinding and it's at the point now where it is getting uh, pretty oversold. Uh, shorting it at this point is going to uh, I think carries a lot of risk. I think we have a knee jerk reaction just like we've seen back here where price sells down. You see a huge five, six percent rally in, in oil. Same thing over here. Big pop over here. Another huge pop. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I feel as though we're very close to some type of uh, sharp pop and find some support. Maybe come back up to the 23, 24 area, which is this breakdown zone from this uh, little consolidation. And of course, also right through the heart, the middle of this consolidation. So we could see a quick pop that could come in here and crude oil could continue to uh, fade down and try and put a basing pattern in down at this point. But right now it's in a clear downtrend. It's getting a little oversold and uh, taking any shorts on it, I think carries a lot of risk because it can have a very sharp uh, short covering pop uh, some of the strongest rallies in the market doesn't matter if it's equities or commodities some of the sharpest rallies that we've ever seen happen in bear markets it's everyone gets short and then of course the shorts start to cover and you get these massive sharp one two three day pops in price so you got to be very careful something that's long in the tooth hasn't corrected yet it can do that very quickly taking a quick look at the US dollar index Here's a UUP ETF. Uh, we actually yesterday UDN, which is an inverse fund, so it's going to rise as the US dollar falls down. If we just zoom out here, uh, more or less, uh, we've had a, a big three wave correction here in the US dollar index where it's come down, come back up. Now it's flushing back down. It came down to a pretty critical support zone right through this level, started to show a reversal sign. We ended up getting long uh, yesterday at the open. It faded back intraday, and this morning we're starting to see it move up, trading above yesterday's high. Now, if we take a quick look at, say, the 30-minute chart, you can get a feel for the type of price action that we had. Let me just uh, zoom in a bit more here. So here you can see uh, the price action in UDN. So far, it's had a nice pop up. Talked about this uh, recently in a, in a couple of videos where any price gap is technically should be seen as part of a flagpole. So a big gap up is usually part of the flagpole and then you see price flag down. And then you can see the tick this morning where we're trading up here. We're already trading back up above yesterday's highs and this could continue to extend with a Fibonacci measured move. Uh, over here again same same for gaps to the downside a gap down is considered a, uh, a flagpole of course it flagged here and then had the second half of that move over there so if we were to just quickly throw the Fibonacci extension on here and go from the low to the high down to the low there is potential for us to see the US dollar index went from here pulled back this is the measured move up here around the 20 uh, 2203 area somewhere right up in there so that's right and of course this morning we're trading right here 2193 <clears throat> so it's starting to move in our favor this morning hopefully we'll see some follow-through and, and continue to move up and uh, and reach those levels we do have the first target set at 22 so if we do get a continued push up here we will be selling half of our position to lock in some gains and move our stop uh, to break even to our entry point here so that if it does pull back and reverse in some hard way we uh, move out uh, of the rest of the position uh, at break even and still locking in a small uh, gain going forward anyways that's it for this morning talk to you in a little bit bye bye